All right, I'll turn it over to you, Monica. Okay, thank you, Harrison. Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending our program tonight at the Edith B. Ford Memorial Library. Uh, we are honored once again to have our presenter, uh, Walter Gable, here uh, presenting the program on the first chartered New York State Agricultural College in Ovid. Um, uh, Mr. Gable has been uh, the Seneca County historian since 2003. And other than his years at Syracuse University, both undergrad and graduate studies degrees, he is a lifelong resident of Seneca County. And um, uh, this college was uh, unfortunately ill-fated, it seems. It was uh, through the hard work of our Seneca County residents in the 19th century that this college was first created and chartered. And um, Walter will tell you the rest of the story. So without further delay, please welcome Walter Gable. Thank you. This is Seneca County historian Walter Gable speaking. I want to welcome you all to this program on the State Agricultural College at Ovid. I hope that you will learn some things about this college's history, things that will give you a greater appreciation of the existence of this State Agricultural College at Ovid. This was the first chartered agricultural college in New York State and one of the first in the entire United States. Shown here is a drawing of what the college building was envisioned to look like when it became fully operational and fully enrolled. Sadly, this never happened. How this agricultural college ended up being located in the town of Ovid and how its operation came to a swift end is the bulk of this program. A New York State Agricultural College was provided for in state legislation passed April 25th, 1853 by the New York State Legislature. It was a legislative idea and goal of the New York State Agricultural Society for many years before it, the law was passed in 1853. This long-term legislative goal of the New York State Agricultural Society received new emphasis when John Delafield became president of the State Agricultural Society in 1851. John Delafield was a wealthy retired businessman from New York City and he bought a farm called Oaklands near Rose Hill Mansion in the town of Fayette here in Seneca County, New York. In 1850, he completed and published an extensive study of agriculture and economics in Seneca County. That Delafield's survey of Seneca County is a source that I often use in my research work as county historian. John Delafield on his Oaklands farm tried to make use of the newest scientific agricultural practices possible. Given all of what I've said about him already, it should not be surprising that he was going to use his presidency of the State Agricultural Society to make its goals of a state chartered agricultural college a reality. When the state legislature passed this law in 1853, 
providing for a state agricultural college, the intent was that this new college would be located on Delafield's Oaklands farm and that Delafield himself would oversee the project. Tragically, however, Delafield died suddenly that October and the goal of establishing this agricultural college languished for a few years. Then by 1855, there was a revived interest in establishing a state agricultural college here in New York State. Several Central Finger Lakes communities, Ithaca, Aurora, Kings Ferry, Farmer, which is present Interlaken, Sheldrake, and Ovid, all aspired to be the chosen site for this agricultural college. Ovid emerged victoriously, largely due to the promotional efforts of the Reverend Amos Brown. Reverend Brown was the principal of the Seneca Collegiate Institute, which was located roughly where the fellowship hall of the Ovid Federated Church stands today. Reverend Brown spearheaded an effort to raise $46,000 locally through the share of stocks being purchased by these people. Reverend Brown lobbied the New York State Legislature to grant a $40,000 loan, $40, loan to the college. Shown here is a $50 stock certificate issued to one local person. Shown here are people whose farms were purchased for this agricultural college. Approximately 670 acres of farmlands were purchased in the towns of Ovid and Romulus near a tiny settlement then called Ovid Landing that is present day Willard. This included land belonging to Morris Kinney, A.B. Johnson, Sarah Sutton, Amasa Furman, Louis Swarthart, Eliza Kilpatrick, David Dunnett, Andrew Purdy, and others. It cost $65 an acre on average to purchase this farmland, and that amounted to about $43,000, which was a little more than the state loan of $40,000. The Ovid B newspaper issue of September 10th, 1856 wrote, quote, a cannon was fired in the village of Ovid and the cupola of the Collegiate Institute was illuminated on September 6th, the date of the final notice from Albany in commemoration of the decision to locate the Agricultural College at Ovid, unquote. The farmlands site was described as follows, quote, here was a well-watered farm possessing a great variety of fine soil near one of the most beautiful lakes in the world with 100 acres of valuable timberland quarries of stone for lime and building purposes, good mill power, pure atmosphere, a fine slope, and unrivaled beauties." Unquote. Here I have tried to piece together 1850 property owner maps for the towns of Ovid and Romulus to show the farmlands that became the Agricultural College 
at Ovid. On these pieced together 1874 property owner maps, I am showing that this area by 1874 had become the Willard Asylum for the Insane. Note the location of the Branch Asylum, which was the main agriculture college building. Two of the farmhouses on the purchased property were kept for the agricultural college's use. Initially, the upper farmhouse became the residence of the Honorable Samuel Cheever, who was the president of the college. This was the logo adopted for the college. Note the agricultural elements of this logo. I show this picture again because I want you to have a clear vision in your mind of the intended building once the college became fully operational. This is the portion of that plan that was completed when the college opened in December, 1860. This is the Southern portion of the envisioned full building. The site for this building was chosen as being about the center of the farm properties and on a crown of land on former Morris Kinney's portion of his farm. The site is about one mile from Seneca Lake. This is part of what became known much later as the Grand View building of the Willard Asylum for the Insane. This portion of building cost $30,000 and was capable of accommodating from 125 to 150 students with the necessary rooms for lectures, professors, and officers of the college. Major Marcina Patrick was chosen as the college president prior to the opening of the college on December 5, 1860. He was a West Point graduate. You might think that looking at this picture and because he was a West Point graduate, that he had a rather strong discipline demeanor. But there are clear reports that he was very personable with the Ag College students and they liked him. The State Agricultural College finally opened December 5th, 1860. This is the building as it looked then. When the college opened on December 5th, 1860, there were approximately 40 students, many of whom were local, but some from as far away as Florida. For $200 a year, a student would receive classroom instruction and practical on the farm experience. There were to be two terms each year. The winter term would run from December 1st to March 1st. The summer term would run from April 15th to November 1st. The plans were for a three-year course of study and for the college to expand to as many as 350 students. The curriculum was quite demanding. To give you some detailed idea, let me give you this one example. The summer term of the first year of study was to include English language, arithmetic reviewed and completed, commencement of algebra, and principles of chemistry, 
mineralogy, geology, and botany. During that term, the freshman students would be instructed in plowing, spading, care of hoed crops, gathering hay and grain crops, management of the diet, dairy, and so on. Here I show the names of some of the local area students at this agricultural college. Perhaps for our purposes in this program, William L. Eastman is especially noteworthy. He became a prominent farmer, especially as breeder of horses in the Ovid area. Now for the tragic bad timing. The outbreak of the Civil War in mid-April 1861 led to a temporary closure of this state agricultural college. Major Marcina Patrick was called back to active military duty. Several students left to join the military. The Southern students rather abruptly left to go back home. Staff left for military service. By May 1861, so many of the students had left the college that the trustees closed the college temporarily. But the college did not reopen in fall 1861 or winter 1861. In March 1862, it was officially announced that, quote, college doors are closed for the present, unquote. On April 9th, 1862, about 200 acres of the college lands were sold to pay off debts owed. Without students paying tuition, it is easy to realize that the college trustees were not able to repay their loan to New York State. Finally, the state of New York foreclosed and most of the remaining 475 acres of property were taken by the state. The state lands were then worked as farmlands on shares. When the state of New York decided to open a second state asylum for the insane, this former agricultural college property was chosen as the site for this second state asylum for the insane. Two main reasons for this were that the state gave priority in the selection of a site to currently owned state property. And second, the desire to have this proper, have the property of a new state asylum in an area that was open, allowing for plenty of fresh air. With Lincoln as president of the United States in 1862, the Morrill Land Grant Act passed both houses of Congress again, and President Lincoln signed it into law. This Morrill Land Grant Act provided that each state would receive federal lands in the West, lands which could then be sold to provide funds for that state to operate a so-called land grant college for the teaching of agriculture, mining sciences, and so on. Many of those land-grant colleges became known as A&M colleges, such as Texas A&M. The map shown at bottom left shows that many states had taken advantage of the provisions of this law. In our case, the state of New York would receive 990 thousand acres of western federal lands for its land-grant college. Both the Agricultural College at Ovid 
and the New York People's College at Havana or Montour Falls, New York, were vying for the New York State Legislature to choose their college for this land grant status. In the midst of this struggle between these two colleges, Ezra Cornell made a winning proposal. He was a trustee of the Agricultural College at Ovid, but Ezra Cornell was establishing his own university in Ithaca. Ezra Cornell proposed to the state legislature that he would put up $300,000 of his own money to establish a new, an agricultural college at his new Cornell University if the state would give his Cornell College the land grant status. It was too attractive a financial offer for the state of New York to refuse. So Cornell University got the land grant college award and Cornell yet today is one of only two private colleges or universities in the entire United States to be a land grant college in a private university rather than as a public state college. It was in January of 1866 that the New York State Legislature passed a law giving the land grant college status to Cornell University with the Agricultural College at Ovid giving up any claim to this designation. For many years, a group, a local group conducted annual public tours of the former Willard State Hospital. As part of those tours for most years, I was stationed in the former Agricultural College building, the Grand View building as it became, and I would take people through the building. From in front of the former Agricultural College building, there was a grand view of Seneca Lake about one mile to the west. So you can easily realize why this building became known as the Grand View Building. The former Ag College building was added onto extensively as more and more patient space was needed for the Willard Asylum. The building became known as the Branch because it was not the initial building for housing patients at the Willard Asylum. The top floor of the original Ag College building was removed when it became apparent that in an emergency like a fire, it would be nearly impossible to get all patients out of the original top floor in such an emergency evacuation. The former Ag College building was greatly added on to for patients of the Willard Asylum for the Insane. When more and more patients were at the Willard Asylum, the branch building had extensive additions to the north and some to the east, as shown in this floor plan. In time, this building became known as the Grand View. Here we have before and after pair of pictures of the Grand View building in its completed form. The former Agricultural College is the portion at the right in the bottom picture. When the top floor of the former Agricultural College building was removed, a pitched roof was added to it. This is a drawing of the Willard Asylum. The Grand View Building's location is indicated with an arrow. You will note how far away it is from the original buildings of the original Willard Asylum and how far Grand View Building is from Seneca Lake, about one full mile. 
This is a view of the agricultural college and dining hall in the basement as it looked about 2010 when I took this picture. Note carefully the nature of the floor. This is the same basement floor as it looked in close up on one of my guided tours. This was the fireplace in the dining area portion of that room. We're still in the basement. This visual gives you an idea of how extensive the basement support structure was for this agricultural college building. This is what one of the halls looked like when the agricultural college was actually in session. In 1960, the Willard State Hospital and the New York State Agricultural Society dedicated this plaque on this boulder in honor of the 100th anniversary of the Agricultural College. Shown at right is then Governor Nelson Rockefeller who came and spoke for this event. This is a close-up of the boulder and the wording of the plaque on it. Notice that it says that the first state agricultural college was undone by war. It was transformed into Willard State Hospital. And here Ezra Cornell, a trustee of the Ag College, received the inspiration which became Cornell University. In 2008, local historical societies sponsored events to celebrate the history of this agricultural college. As part of those celebrations, there was a huge well-attended public program held in the main large room of the Grandview building. Speakers at that program included the Secretary of the New York State Department of Agriculture, the New York State Historian, and Gould Coleman, who had written a history of the Cornell University College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Another part of the 200, 2008 celebration was the erection of this historic marker. The celebration was funded by a grant from the Delavan Foundation. I hope what I have shared as information in this program has enhanced your knowledge of the State Agricultural College at Ovid. We now have ample time for questions from those of you who are listening. Do we have some questions? I don't see any quite yet, Walter. Um, actually, one just came in. Uh, we have a question. Are there still tours of the original buildings? Uh, no, I, I don't foresee that there will be tours. The tours were conducted as a fundraiser for the daycare center that had been operating on the former Willard Asylum property. and. The bulk of the volunteers had were retired employees of the Willard Asylum. The 
We're getting, unfortunately, fewer and fewer of those retirees still able to do that kind of work. And the last such conducted tours, was there was just a massive attendance of people. Uh, we could probably say a few thousand were trying to attend uh, the event. And uh, it's just very difficult. Uh, the drug treatment campus uh, that owns the facility basically now, they use several of the buildings that are important pieces to visit in such tours. And they are making so extensive use of those buildings that it's very difficult to uh, be able to make arrangements for any such tours. So I really don't foresee there being any more tours to the public. Okay. Uh, another patron asked, who was Ezra Cornell? Ezra Cornell was a key person who was putting up the telegraph lines throughout the country. And he uh, developed a good approach to doing that. And he acquired a great personal wealth. He also was involved in trying to establish a railroad line. And he decided that he wanted to use a lot of his personally accumulated wealth to establish a college in Ithaca. And it, of course, becomes the famous Cornell University. He put up $300,000 of his own money. When it gets the land grant from the state legislature, the Cornell has ownership then of 990,000 acres of Western lands. And he shrewdly held off on the sale of those lands until their value accrued to the point that he could then sell the lands at this high price. And it uh, provided a very big initial endowment for Cornell University. All right, it looks like we have another question. What are the buildings used for today? Well, many of the buildings are part of the, are used virtually daily as the drug treatment campus of DOCCS. Uh, some of the buildings have been basically vacant the original first building of the Willard Asylum was actually torn down several years ago. Uh, so some of the buildings are hardly used. Uh, Hadley Hall, which became the main uh, recreational facility for patients at the Willard Hospital and also as place for uh, area youth to go and watch a movie on Saturday afternoons, uh, Hadley Hall is extensively used as a large meeting room and also a recreational facility such as the bowling alley, the few bowling alleys uh, for uh, trainees from other DOCCS uh, operations throughout New York State. Uh, the building that was the infirmary and the uh, uh, is used as a dormitory for these visiting students or people getting training, staff training at Willard. Thank you, Walter. It looks like we have another question here. Uh, were the barns and facilities for the practical experience of students? Yes, there were the farms uh, operated very much originally as the intent to provide practical in the field instruction. And that is so important a part of becoming a, a competent farmer. The farmlands continued uh, in operation for most of the years of the operation of the Willard Asylum or what be eventually became 
the Willard Psychiatric Center. Uh, and it provided a lot of uh, garden vegetables. It provided milk and so on uh, for uh, feeding the patients and helping to keep the costs of maintaining patients down uh, at the Willard Hospital. Of course, as we got into more modern day health requirements, the state of New York finally forced the closure of the farm operation of the Willard Psychiatric Center. Thank you, Walter. Uh, it looks like we have another question here. When did Ovid Landing become Willard? Uh, well, <clears throat> the legislation that provided for the creation of the second state asylum for the insane was the product of a report that an investigative report that was done by a Dr. Sylvester Willard of Auburn, New York. As the legislation was being pre prepared for consideration in the New York State Legislature, Dr. Willard died. And so the legislation was modified to say that the agriculture, the, excuse me, the second state asylum for the insane would be named the Willard Asylum. Now, the settlement, the hamlet that we know today as Willard has been known by different names such as Ovid Landing, Baileytown, for example. But when the Willard Asylum came in and then a train station uh, stop was instituted, it became known as the Willard Stop. And as the Willard Asylum grew in size of number of patients and therefore staff, uh, the Hamlet as a whole just simply took on the name of Willard. All right, I don't see any more questions here. As just a reminder to everyone participating, we are taking questions in the chat box at the bottom of your screen. So feel free to ask those. One question I'll anticipate that I really didn't address in the program, there, you will sometimes see that this agricultural college at Ovid is called the first state agricultural college in the entire United States. That's probably a little misleading statement. Had this agricultural college opened in 1855, excuse me, 1853, when the state legislation was first passed, it might very well have been indeed the first agricultural college in the entire United States as a state agricultural college to be operational. But the tragic death of John Delafield led to that delay. And so when it doesn't open until 1860, we can probably safely say that other states had opened agricultural colleges before this one actually opened. All right, we'll take any last calls for questions and then we'll conclude the presentation. I'll let you know when that is though, Walter. Okay. Oops. 
start my video. Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Again, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Walter always has so many facts to tell us, and uh, we could do an entire um, program just on the buildings, I think, of, of Willard um, and the farm, which I think continued until 1961, something like that, and provided uh, really um, it was considered therapeutic work at the time for um, patients to be working on the farm and it made it uh, uh, really a almost self-sufficient um, institution. So um, any thoughts, if anyone has any ideas on the types of programs they'd like to see here at the library, please give me an email. Um, and uh, I thank you so much for uh, Walter, once again, providing this really educational program because so few of us knew, right, that this existed here in Ovid. And uh, I thank you so much for all of your research and your presentations and your time. Thank you. Glad to do it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Thank you.